Hey, all my little bits and bites. Welcome to another episode of The Lost Bots. I'm your host, Jeff Gardner. What up? Stephen Davis. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about fishing, but not your standard run-of-the-mill fishing. Grouper fishing? Hmm. Uh, you got, let's see, uh, catfish fishing? I, I, I don't get paid enough for this, man. <laughs> so, we're going to be talking about a new technique called the browser and browser attack. Um, been demonstrating. Jeepers, Jeff? What's a browser and browser attack? I'm going to murder you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you, Steve. <laughs> it's, it's something that's been demonstrated as of this year. Um, and we're here to fill you in on what it is and what you can do about it. So, I mean, we all know typical phishing attacks. Email sent to the user, usually from a spoofed address. Contains a link to a site that mimics a legitimate one, say from your bank. If you just look at the link, seems legitimate. Mouse over the link, you see the real URL, which is usually easily able to be identified, but you know, sometimes they get tricky, use zeros instead of an O or other tricks, but with proper training, you know, security awareness training, it's still not impossible to identify. And what's, it just, oh, the bad guys got to thinking and like, hey, how can we make phishing even, I don't know, more annoying than it already is? So they came more up- More annoying with, than your interruptions like I'm doing right now, like, like more annoying than that. Yeah, I deserve <laughs> that, I deserve that. So they came up with an idea to simulate a browser window with the trusted site address appearing in this browser window's URL bar. The idea came to be known as, like you stated, the browser in browser attack, I believe. Around... Golly, Stephen, what's a browser in browser attack? <laughs> you, earned you. you earned that. You earned that. I did earn that. That's two for, two for me, two for you. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So I believe this came about uh, March of 2022, if memory serves me correct. Um, and it, it essentially works like this. The bad guys obviously register a domain, and then they make a clone of a legitimate website that they are obviously attempting to try and get people's information from. Uh, this clone is rendered in an iframe, so the user actually has no ability to see they're on a completely different site at first glance. Trying um, so hard not to interrupt you every two seconds. <laughs> it's, it's so difficult. <laughs> Three for you, two for me. So they set it up so that, you know, the visitors need to sign in with a username and a password, and they want to take action on the said, you know, whatever site that they're on. Uh, it could be for purchasing something, you know, uh, third-party services, whatever the case is. Uh, if they have to swipe left, swipe right, whatever, you know, whatever, whatever yeah. the site may be. Accessing new features, leaving comments, you know, on sites and things like that. Uh, and if that's the case, then, you know, these bad actors will actually add buttons that supposedly permit the login uh, to that said legitimate service. But, you know, actually, it doesn't actually do anything except your username and password just got stolen. So if, you know, the victim clicks on anything, you know, they'll see the login window they're familiar with. Like always, the victim, Stephen, always the victim, Stephen, always the victim. Yeah, always the victim. And they'll see Microsoft, they'll see Google or an Apple, Apple prompt with the correct address, the correct logo, text boxes, inputs, everything that they're used to. The window can even be displayed, you know, with all of the correct HTTPS little lock, all of the addresses on there when you hover over with the mouse, which is, you know, a standard practice to try and find if it's a faulty uh, link or anything like that. If they hover over anything, it will actually show the correct information for everything. It's it's insane and it's scripted to appear right on the page that is trying to trick them. It's so they, they, they took a page out of Mr. Deeds and went very, very tricky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very, very sneaky. Yeah, you know, paraphrasing Mr. Deeds. Sorry, I know some purist out there is going to be like, very, very sneaky. Oh, I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> I don't want to piss anybody off. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not making me mad. No, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's cool. Um, so, you know, how basically, how can you tell what's real? I, I came up with a little test. If you want to play along with me, let's let's play a game. You know, I'm not going to do all creepy, you it's know. All. Yeah, it'd be like Saw, but let's play a game. Let's see if I can share my screen. Let's see if this actually works. First time sharing the screen. So we're going to go to the test. Oh. Here, here, is the, here is your test. So oh, you've got man. two examples. This is exactly what you're talking about. Browser bars look the same, same kind of login information. Which one would be real? Uh, I would play the Jeopardy theme song if we had a budget to include it, but we don't. So you're just going to have to go on timer. Dude, I think the font looks a little weird on the right one. 
So I'm going to go with the real ones, the left. So you're, you're going to go with this, this guy over here. Yeah. All right. So let's see if you are correct. You, oh. I know I, I, when I first saw this, I thought the same thing too. Cause like I'm looking analyst view and I'm going, wait a minute, this L right here, it doesn't look, you know, it, it looks kind of janky, but no, that's, that's the real side, but this is just the level of realism that they can. And like, this looks correct. Like it's yeah. exactly as it was in the real and the fake. Holy so God. how can you actually detect this? Like, how would you know in the real world, you know, outside of your fishing solution or something blocking this? So another little <laughs> bunch, of, <laughs> bunch of images so I can show you. I mean, this isn't actually going to work. I mean, <laughs> everybody loves annoying orange. So this isn't going to really work, but it'll still demonstrate principles, essentially. So on the left. So one of the ways you can do it is if this were actually the fake site. If you tried to move Happy Lemon outside of the bounds of Annoying Orange, it would stop you. Like It wouldn't let you go outside the bounds of the iframe because it's being rendered in an iframe. So right. the other way you can you could test is on the right is if you went and closed out Annoying Orange and this was a fishing site, Happy Lemon would also disappear. Whereas if this were a legitimate login window and rendered it in an iframe, when you close out the main window, it, it should still stay behind like that. Right. So a little, little fun, you know, example for us um, just to have, have some laughs. Um, so, you know, not impossible to detect, but it is definitely a pain. And invariably someone's going to do the thing as users do and fall victim to the attack. Um, we're all humans. We all make mistakes. So in that case, what else can you do? Well, if you have SIM or an XDR solution, you could utilize something like behavior analytics rules to detect on simple things like suspicious logins to things like cloud services, email, your VPN. Um, Yuba would ideally also cover things um, like new logins uh, to assets from a different IP, something like first time login address, that kind of a deal. But the key to all Yuba detections um, being really impactful is coupling that with machine learning or some kind of baselining user behavior. A lot of solutions on the market don't include Yuba and some solutions may advertise that they have Yuba, but if it's not combined with any kind of baselining or machine analytics, it's basically going to send you in a false positive hell. And I know anybody out there who's used Yuba without behavior analytics can sympathize with what I'm saying. So that's on the front end. Um, on the back end, you know, assuming that the attacker got access through your VPN or to your email or something, um, you know, understanding what attackers do going back to behavior analytics um, can also help you uh, understand malicious activity in the early stages. So for example, when they're doing recon enumeration um, and things like that. that. That makes sense, man. I, I just can't get over your, your annoying orange. I, I'm, I'm reaching, I'm reaching into the grab bag. I know it's not oh. you know, the, the newest reference. And I know somebody out there in the universe is going to make some kind of snarky comment about me being old. You don't, <laughs> you and I both don't know who it is. Um, nope. nope. Not a clue. Not um, at all. But yeah, so, you know, I had to throw it out there. <laughs> I, I appreciate it, man. It was a good little uh, walk down memory lane there. So, I mean, the easiest things to do, though, easy being a relative term, of course, is consistently train, consistently train, consistently train your users and implement two-factor authentication. What, what are you, what are you, what are you supposed to do? I don't think I got that. You are. You're not, so you don't, you don't train them? <laughs> consistently don't train okay. them. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Consistently train them. Implement two-factor authentication. Don't don't not not train them. Let's add as many negatives. Don't as we not can not train them. To the the biggest mistake I've seen here isn't with the two FA or two-factor auth authentication implementation or anything like that. It's actually with the training of the users. That's you know that is why it is so widespread. Phishing. Uh, well, Kali, Stephen, uh, what's wrong with training the users? <laughs> You're never going to live that down ever. <laughs> well, no, I'm not going to ever. Um, so instead of making it a positive experience, we tend to go bad cop and propose ideas such as, hey, if you fail this phishing exercise three times and you know your internet access is going to be revoked, your manager is going to be contacted, all this other like lockdown scenarios and stuff, and it makes your existence absolutely miserable. We're all adults, right? So recommendation is to- What else can you do? New. What else can you do? <laughs> like, you know, if a user who successfully submits three verified phishing emails or passes, you know, whatever amount of phishing tests you have, 
you know, maybe they get a uh, entry into a raffle to win that, you know, Billy Big Mouth Bass that was on the on your screen earlier. Or... Hopefully not the one that's behind you. I'd return that and re- post post haste. You didn't mean that. Um, positive. We'll just re- call it Angelina. We'll just call that fish Angelina. <laughs> positive reinforcement people are more apt to engage when you act with kindness and start treating them like an adult and also again yeah yep nope i I definitely agree with that one um so lots of good information here it's our first one you know sharing some images sharing some examples i hope you all enjoyed it i hope you all learned something and i hope you all have a great rest of your day and thanks for joining us and we look forward to seeing you on our next episode take care everybody take care